Hey guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're a new subscriber, thank you for watching this video. Make sure that you click the subscribe button and the bell notification bell and the notification bell to make sure that you get notifications each time I upload a new video. Guys, this is a lot of work. But anyway, make sure that you click the bell button once you've clicked the subscribe button if you haven't done that already. And if you're a returning subscriber, what do you do, baby? We've rebranded and moved from Sunflower with the 4C. My channel is now called Majita Tina, which are both my names, Majita Tinae. Um, so yeah, um, just in case you're wondering who's this that's probably popping up in your notifications or whatever. But anyway, today's video is going to be a, um, a vlog, I think. Um, I'm just going to do a quick get ready with me. I'm going to time lapse the get ready with me. And then um, I recently started working for, well, consulting for The Match. They are an event. Well, it's an event. How do I even describe it? It's an event. So I do event management for them. So this is the first event that I'm going to be managing for them. Um, so yeah, uh, I will obviously try and vlog as much as possible. Um, considering that I'm going to be working as well so that might be a bit difficult but I will ask someone to vlog on my behalf and yeah I hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, leave a yellow heart in the comment section so that I know that you're here and you're watching this video to the end I'm back so I didn't manage to record um to record the get ready with me because I kind of got busy and I needed to finish some chores and I was running late so I'm done with my makeup um I'm actually just I'm about to leave the house so I am wearing black uh, monochrome pants with a white crop top and a red blazer so I will kind of do a breakdown of the outfit um that's the outfit Please excuse the mess that's in the back. I recently moved back in my parents' house, so yeah, I'm still kind of unpacking. But yeah, that's my outfit. So the shoes are from China, Alibaba. Yeah, I had bought them like a while back. 2018, I think. And the pants thrifted from Bulawayo Thrift, the one that used to be by City Hall. I don't know if it's still there because I haven't been there in a while. The blazer, I thrifted it here. Um, in Domboshava, the bag I bought from a friend. It comes with another one that's a small one. <clears throat> the crop top I bought from Style Maniac with a pair of pants, but I'm not wearing the pants right now. The necklace was a gift from my mom. The pendant is a set of um slipper earrings that I don't wear anymore. The earrings I bought from a vendor in town. Um, the hair is from My Kind of Hair by Chi Chi. I did try to straighten it, but like my irons are not working. So yeah, I did the best I could with what I had. So I will probably take it to the salon so that they can fix it properly. But that's my outfit. I think it really looks cool. Um, I will probably take off the jacket because it's kind of hot. Um, but yeah, that's what we're dealing with outfit of the day cute right i know
Kuweza kuma hona na moinga so chikunda Sari ya ndoku noenda vangwepi Ndoku noenda vangwepi Ongu kure kweka wa usi komuzuku Misoti mbezi ndiriko kunderi mwedi vireru narepe Dosuruki wando kacho kachani no dangudi ufarepe Jindo ni tuma urongo mudiwa Pekandi note ya ranguriwa
open to the Lord. Getting it right. The first time you wake up, you say, I want to start a business. The golden rule. Well, uh, you know, entrepreneurship is a little bit complex. So I'd say for me, the golden rule is, is, is know your context. Also, we, we are also, I guess at the, at the moment, we're still in the middle of a pandemic, right? What advice would you give to businesses in terms of adjusting to this economy? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, uh, the thing about entrepreneurship is that you, 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 you get to play with the cards that you're given, right? So the context at present is that uh, we are operating in an environment that is constrained, obviously, by COVID. Uh, but uh, the constraint also presents some opportunities. And I think we've seen over the past uh, couple of, uh, uh, I would say, three years that we've been uh, subjected to this pandemic, uh, that um, uh, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs have been stepping up to the game to harness some of the opportunities that have been presented uh, by, by the pandemic. And I would say one of the things that the pandemic has actually accelerated is a uh, uh, digital uh, uh, integration or the, the migration from, from everything that we've been used to to mainstreaming digital in almost everyday life. So, yeah, that, that, that's my take. All right. From, from your end, do you think most businesses have adjusted? to the changes, like you're saying, there's a lot of digitalization that's happened and everything. Do you think a lot of businesses have adjusted to that? Uh, I, I think businesses are, are attempting to adjust, but obviously there's a misconception around what can be done, how it can be done, and why it should be done. What, uh, what would you say to how can it be done? Yeah, so I, I'll give the, the, the lowest hanging fruit has obviously been uh, harnessing social marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of businesses have gone online for social marketing because uh, the assumption is that that's where a lot of their customers are. Uh, but the biggest challenge that has been there is that uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of noise online. Uh, businesses want reach, uh, but that reach has no relevance or resonance to precisely what they do. So there's a disconnect in most cases uh, in terms of the noise that they're making and uh, 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 um, the ultimate uh, goals that they're they are aiming for. Uh, there's noise that's not in reaching the bottom line, really. All right, thank you. Um, sorry, I know we've all had a couple of drinks, and you know we're a bit hyper, but some people just send someone to say we can't hear because we are speaking at the top of our voices in the back. So if it's okay, can we just tone it down a little? All right, um, Chris, Chris, Chris. <laughs> the money guy. I feel like you, what, what, what issues in terms of personal growth and challenges do you think the youth right now, you said you were excited to be here because there's a lot of young adults. Where do you think we have to change? What do you think we have to work on? Oh, thank you so much. It's a very difficult question on the surface. It looks so simple. Why? Because, you know, the advantage of being youth is you can make a mistake and correct it tomorrow and it will not be too late. Unlike maybe a 40 year old who is, <laughs> who is in the business of making mistakes, you see. But uh, I think for myself, coming up, it was a difficult background. For those who know where we go back, I think, you know, it's a pure ghetto like any ghetto you can think of, isn't it? And Born a triplet uh, in a ghetto where you, your hero is someone who buys even the 40 year old vehicle, just holding a vehicle or something, you would look at it and say, Wow, I think this is something you can only dream of. So I think I accepted the fact that the background was poor, which is the first step you need to take. For sometimes you live in hallucination to think. The reason why someone is doing better is their luck. The reason why someone is doing better is a girlfriend or a wife. <laughs> once, once you are in that trip, then sometimes it's difficult for you to make a next step. Or auntie, who pushed my dream to be what I could be. The only way to accept all that at that juncture was definitely just a textbook. You know, if, if I go to school and I make it, I would rather fight to get a job with my qualifications. 
why? Like I'm saying, no one had set pace for me. My dad was just, you know, he was a hero, but he can have like in the eyes of what it means to be successful. Working for Anglo American then, but at the very low level. Living in a ghetto where if you were a two bedroom house, that's all we could have. I think for those who have been to Wayroom Koba, you know, even when you are building your yards, sometimes you ignore the net portion even for a driveway because you know this place will never have a car driving in, isn't it? <laughs> so it's, it's a background way I then came from. But being a Christian who believes, and also being an individual up to now who just believes anything and everything is possible. No need, no reason for excuses. Major reason why most youth, young people fail. They've got excuses. Secondly, they are looking for a solution from someone. You can't. I mean, look, whenever a solution, if you need a solution in your life, it has to start, it has to begin with you before you look for anywhere else. Even your siblings might not be a solution to whichever situation you are. And maybe third, people take for granted. I think because of economic downturn, things look ugly, but I believe education remains a ticket for one to escape poverty. But this does not mean that if you are struggling with schooling, your future is blind. That doesn't necessarily mean that. But if, if an opportunity arises, and for my background, it's a testimony of where I'm coming from. If I know that this area I can do better than any other way, then definitely you have to execute. But I think as we interact, there are challenges I would have faced, I faced them in life. Some of the challenges obviously have to do with every time you dream to go to the best school. But the only school you can go to, you know what you call upper top. <laughs> when you just manage to be at school, and if you manage to register those nine subjects at all level, then you are good to go. So what challenge is it? Secondly, you don't need to feel sorry for yourself. You know, in our communities, there's a thin line between arrogance and confidence. So sometimes you can be so apologetic to say, how can I be making so that people will not think I'm arrogant? Huh? It's, it's a problem for young adults who are trying to make it. Because there's a caricature of, of a standard to say, if you want me to give you an opportunity, it's either you need to be humble. And for them to be humble is to pitch lower than they do, even those who have made it in life. So at the end of the day, you, <laughs> you seem in mediocrity. So I think. I believe in myself. You know, when, when we form one, what is it that I've done well in form one? Maybe in a class of 480 people, at one point, I was the first as the number one out of two. Then I, I, I was confident that I can be anything I want to be. Now. So it's a, it's a history sometimes, not your background. Your background should be a springboard to push you up, not a threat to kill your vision. Then secondly, I think I had proper friends around me. It was some species which drain potential young adults It's your association. You're afraid of doing better than your friend. So you have to remain in that space for you to remain together. So I think I was willing to, to move out of that space where another friend of mine was 40 plus. And you, you have to mature faster than even when you meet a chick and don't ask her how she gets your name. <laughs> because the environment would already maybe set you a pace. So it was self-belief. And I knew that I couldn't be perfect. I needed to learn what is that, that typical young CEO. But exposure also, when you travel out there and see travel, people who are 27, 25, who are doing so well, that's when you realize even at 30, you are not even as young as you want to believe you are. Yeah, I've got the two older, he's a 26 year old. Your, your, your why, your what, your who, your when, and that sort of thing. Um, so ordinarily, what I advise uh, most of uh, the entrepreneurs that I work with is that before you, um, you've got to discover first what's there. What am I going to do? What do I need to do? Right, um, and once you discover that, there are tools that can help you discover that. Uh, ordinarily, I, I make use of the business model canvas, uh, which is a tool that helps you simplify uh, and generate your business model. 
Uh, and the next step is obviously to move to the lean canvas, which helps you figure out how you're going to compete differently. And in all of this, what we are trying to do is to get the entrepreneur to first and foremost discover what do they want to do. Once they've discovered what they want to do, validate. Uh, because uh, entrepreneurship is like throwing a set of assumptions into the marketplace, right? And these assumptions need to be validated. To validate, the next step is creation, right? You create the solution that you, you, you want uh, to, 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 to launch into the market. So that's all part of the, the whole ideation to commercialization sort of entrepreneurs is who's your customer, right? Because you find that um, you go into places like bar talk and people say, shoot us, fire, that sort of thing, right? And Juru fire to whoever has got a customer, right? Kurima um, fire. Kuruku fire to whoever has got a customer, right? Uh, because what, what then happens is that people go into feuds and industries because someone else has said there's an opportunity. But you changed. As a, COVID happened. Business, I'm, I'm assuming also business setups and how you would set up a business is different. In terms of seeing, in terms of building a brand as an entrepreneur, what's your take currently on a business and on an entrepreneur being the face of their brand? Where we attach you to your business as an individual, what would be your take on that? Yeah, so my, my take is obviously that uh, strategy is contextual, right? Um, there are certain brands that borrow or off from the proprietor's own personal brand. So you look at your, 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 your Tesla, for example. I'm going to mention Tesla uh, because the Tesla stock, right, is premised on the belief that the market has on Elon Musk, right? Uh, when, t when, when Elon says uh, Dogecoin is, 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 is the real deal, Dogecoin becomes bullish. When, t when Elon says, I'm exiting Bitcoin, you, you see what happens. So, But sorry, I, I wanted to interject there. You're already talking about an established brand. I'm saying, here's Noxy. Noxy is starting a company. Do you recommend that I am fully attached to my company. And in the event you do, how best do we maneuver that space? Jabuda, Hanzi, Noxi, Aguda, Nemrumi, Tipane, Scandal, but Tipane Business, how do you work on making sure those two don't affect each other? Yeah, so I think at inception, the, the vision and the vision are inseparable, right? Um, and for any business, right, as you charge your way forward, they're going to be early adopters. And in most cases, the early adopters are people who recognize you as a brand. Because people, you know, it's a cliche, but the reality is that people buy into you before they buy into what you're selling, right? So, any stage, it may be difficult to separate the, the visionary from the vision. <laughs>
I come back. Yo, oh, guys, it's been a long day. Ah, I can finally remove these things. Because, yes. Uh, yo. My eyes feel free. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching this far. I know that this vlog has been chaotic and it has been super long. But um this is me resurfacing from hibernation in the youtube world and kind of making a reappearance so i hope you guys enjoy this and i hope that if you haven't already you are going to click that subs subs a eh? subscribe you subscribe a eh, subscribe button mm, and make sure to click the little bell button on the screen as well so that you get notifications each time i have a new video uploaded um yeah man thank you guys so much i appreciate you and i love you so much Mwah.